when you first receive the board, it will generally come with the hive stop located in this hole here. The first job you've got to do is to remove that and just place it into one of the other three holes available to you at the front here. And uh, they're placed on a slight angle depending on the thickness of the beehive boxes you're using. So push that tab in and just leave it dangling for now. The second most important thing that you've got to think about is uh, on each of the feet here, there's a screw hole. These have to be located into a pallet or a bit of 4x2 or some sort of material just to keep the hive off the ground by about 2 inches, which will uh, A, it'll keep good airflow under the hive and B, it'll um, allow you to get the trays in and out a lot easier. Just for instance, I put the uh, base on these two bits of wood which aren't the right thickness. Put the screw in here and just fasten the base to the bit of wood. Now you can either do all four feet if you've just got a single hive or if it's on a pallet side by side it's possibly better just to leave two screws in and there's enough flex in the base so that when you lift one corner, one side of the base to just do a heat test to see how much honey there is it will just flex and then you can put a strap right around the whole thing and hold it together. The next thing is the trays. The trays, there's up to three trays that can be placed into the I've got bottom board. Um, each area here is a 3% uh, is a, it has an opening of 3% of the total hive base. So there's 9% of the floor area open. This is much reduced from the standard mesh white bottom board which can be up to 80%. And the problem I've seen and heard back from about the standard mesh bottom boards are the amount of food um, supplies that disappear over winter. This here reduces the food supply usage over winter. It allows the hive to breathe and also get rid of debris from the bottom of the hive, which is the basis of the hive got plan, which is to get a, a cleaner and more sterile environment for the hives to live in, for the bees to live in. So as you can see, you, put, you, can, put three, you can put the trays in either which way. It doesn't matter from either side. It makes no difference. To get the first tray in on the front edge here, you have to actually lift the base, lift the hive off to be able to insert it. You can do it from underneath, but it's a bit of a trick. So generally, it's only the standard, uh, only the middle tray that is used, and that one there is used for pest surveillance of um, varroa. And you've got the black tray here, which is used in Australia generally for the small hive beetle as a small hive beetle trap. Uh, what a lot of guys do is they put a blob of uh, Vegemite or something that is a yeast attractant for the small hive beetle and um, food grade mineral oil or, or something else in there and they will come in and be attracted to the dark cavity and then drown in the silicon oil. Um, the, I generally recommend that the black tray is placed at the rear of the hive. Uh, it is the darkest area and more likely that the bees will corral the small hive beetle down into that area. And of course you can do away with all the trays and just have it open. There's three locators in the front here and they can be interchanged all different colours. These locators serve two purposes. One is to reduce bee drift. If you've got two hives next to each other, they will, the bees should be able to determine which hive they've come from. And the other thing is for queen mating is that the queen will go and do her maiden flight and it gives her some identification to come back to this hive. These markers simply pop out, you just squeeze the two tabs here and they push out. In the instance of some of you who want a uh, landing board, you push the middle one out And the landing tray just slots in as thus. And that way you still get access to all the features at the front, such as the hive entrance stopper. Once the box is on the hive, should it be pushed backwards, the hive stop there stops the box from going into the closed position. Now if you want to open the hive to its summer position, you push the hive forward and it just sits in that summer position. And now the summer position 
means the whole front along here is open and the beast can go forward and backwards. If stock come along, if there's something that interrupts it and bumps it, it goes back into the winter position and doesn't fully close. So it's very important that that marker, that clip, is always up. If you push the clip down, then you can push the hive right back to the closed position and now the hive is completely closed, uh, ready for moving. This little catch here, the, re the hive stop, the reason for that is that once it's in the closed position, you want to be able to close the hive off and it just stops the box moving forward. It's not a permanent stop because I recommend the use of a hive strap around the box as well when you're moving it. The hive stop can also be used when it's in the standard winter position. If you don't want the box falling forward into the summer position during winter, you can put it there and it stops it and it prevents it from falling forward into the summer position. The idea for these, for the grooves at the back here, if you notice they're shaped similar to a tool. And the idea being that when the bees, after a year's use or so, the bees will propolize this down quite hard. So if you put your hive tool into the back there, you can release the hive from the propolis, from the pro uh, propolis base, and so you can move it backwards and forwards. Each one of these vents here has a little tab across it, and the tab is only there for the manufacturing purpose of keeping the sides of the wall straight, and so no bees can escape. After a year or two, or if you have a weak hive, you'll notice that there are some bees that do drop down there and jam it up. It's perfectly fine to push that through and to break those tabs and to push the bees through. It won't hurt the base, baseboard at all. We've also recently added some features to the tray. If for some reason you've got small bees or there's a, maybe a slight manufacturing glitch and the bees can get through, what we've added is a small hole in the base here that can be popped out and so the bees can escape. There's also a range of other holes on the base here and you can just push those through and that will allow water to escape from the hive base. As far as tray insertion goes, this is generally how you'd hold the tray as you go in. Now it helps if the tray is mounted on something slightly higher than these boards here, but once you've got some weight on here, the idea when you're inserting a this is to find the two little markers on the side here and then run the tray back and forwards and you can hear it clicking along the vent. So you're applying a little bit of upwards pressure with the, with the fingers. And then as you get to the end, just jab it in and that little jabbing motion will ensure that the tray sits in there. When you want to release it, simply push down on the lever there and it will pull the two clips in here. So obviously when you're inserting it, it's just a simple jabbing motion and it will. I really recommend the use of a hive strap to hold the whole hive together. And we've designed the hive base so there is actually a facility for the hive strap to go through the bottom of, bottom of the base and the tray can still be inserted with that on or off. The beauty of this is it holds the hive strap in place when you undo it. It doesn't twist up underneath and everything's held. And as you know, over time, the high strap will buckle and bend slightly. So what we've done to reduce the issue is we've put a notch into the hive, into the tray here, and that will just take any bumps and, uh, that, are, that are develop in your strap over time. And that should allow it to still easily insert. Sometimes when you're using the hive base, the catch at the front here that stops the hive slots from going into the winter or summer position, or post position, will sit, uh, be pushed down. And that's an indication there's a slight variation in the grooves along the top bar here, uh, or something. And you'll notice is if you slide your frame across and get caught on the catch down there. What we've done is we've made a slight change to the, uh, to the clip here, and we've given uh, taken a little recess at the back. If you find your frames are still catching, you can just get a, high, a knife and just reduce the height of this just very slightly and that will stop the frames catching on here when you're moving it back and forth. Good luck with uh, using it and if you have any helpful suggestions or comments, I'm more than welcome to hear, hear of them. Thanks very much.